Next up is Joshua Singer, uh, who I've had the pleasure of working with the last couple of years. Joshua's students have, um, have, have been very, very helpful to the theater program designing uh, our graphics. Uh, Joshua is um, uh, um, the visual communications design coordinator here in the uh, Department of Design and Industry. His uh, bachelor's degree was from Hampshire College, and he has two MFAs. Um, uh, one from Hunter College in Fine Art, and then one from the California College of the Arts in Design. Um, his research interests are in um, what he calls counter design, and I've gone online and looked at that and actually read some of his material. Um, one thing I know is that it has nothing to do with kitchens. Um, <laughs> it is the first thing that comes up. Uh, <laughs> Different kind of counter. Uh, my connection with it, of course, was an old one, uh, that old phrase of counterculture. And I think there are some yeah. resonances back and forth between what you're talking about and, and, and that. Um, his other central interest is described as uh, the graphic urban landscape. And um, uh, these are, are, are highly um, abstract as well as hugely palpable kinds of interests. And they have a theoretical dimension and I know a practical one. Uh, I think um, the project that you've described here, which I'm hoping you'll describe at greater length, uh, speaks to those shared um, and intersecting interests. We have a slide which is um, one that I'm hoping you'll actually stand up and talk us through. Do I have to stand up? Uh, no, you don't okay. have to stand up. Uh, so this, uh, well, I'll give a bit of a pref, I'll talk over on this <laughs> slide here. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll give a bit of background. So this is, um, it's part of a, a, a volume, it's called the Ad Hoc Atlas, which is actually a sort of an ongoing project. Um, oh, it got cut off. This is Ad Hoc Atlas Volume 2, Version 1. Uh, one thing to note is that actually there is no Volume 1. Um, and that sort of gives you a clue as to what I'm doing. Um, this is a diagram uh, explaining um, how the graphic uh, semiosphere or the semantic landscape uh, of Berlin. Uh, I'm going to stop you. Sure. Tell us what that means. So the semiosphere is essentially a semi this idea of the semiotic space where basically we would say have, um, well, I mean, the understanding that language constructs our reality. So it doesn't refer to signs, literally. I mean, because you're in graphic design, when I read semiotic space, I'm immediately thinking of a graphic environment. That's not what you're talking about. It's partially what I'm talking about. Okay. Because they're actually, I would say that then the signs, you know, if we're talking about billboards or uh -huh. signage. I mean, that is part of a graphic landscape, right? I mean, that's yeah. graphic language in which we are immersed in. Okay. Um, and those things um, influence us. I mean, the most obvious would be things like advertising. Um, I'm sorry for interrupting, no, but no, I thought fine. the language was, was, was something that we well, needed. Well, I, I intend to be opaque most of the time, so that was... <laughs> um, so the idea here is that this graphic landscape, this semantic landscape, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of showing how, so let me back up again. Um, so this, this term of, a, of, of semiosphere in, 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 its, in its founding sort of pertains to literature. I'm trying to bring that over to graphic design. Uh, and I'm interested in the way that graphic language in the urban landscape um, sort of constructs meaning and identity. So in this case, this is a project which I did in Berlin. Um, and what I do is I go through and sort of my excursions and document all these various, you know, sort of graphic signifiers of these, all these little images and it's graffiti and it's billboards and it's signs and it's uh, anything you can imagine, an exit sign. And I, and I geotag them. So they're, 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 uh, they're, they're placed on a map. Um, uh, and, uh, and I start looking at patterns and things like that. But then what I also do is I'm sort of playing with this idea of constructing a theoretical model. And the theoretical model is about um, how, how graphic language then does construct this. But it, it sort of verges on fiction too. So I'm sort of, in a way, sort of throwing things together and sort of seeing what sticks. So in this case, I'm creating this, this model um, of what I'm saying is the semantic, metabolic, 
transmissions in urban surfaces. And, and you just, yeah. you just achieved opaqueness. Right. Uh, no, uh, uh, I know the word is opacity, forgive yeah. me. Um, but no, I think, once again, I'm going to ask you just to explain a little sure. bit more. So the idea that there's this ecology, when I say metabolism, that there's sort of a system in place that's happening here. So I'm trying this into certain uh, theories of, of semiotics. And in this case, creating an actual diagram of how it works. But all of the images that you see here, some of which are actually things that I have sort of empirically grabbed from the landscape, and other things are stuff I've completely made up. So um, there's an imaginary volume one. Yes. Um, tell us about volume three. <laughs> volume three will probably include Detroit. That's about all I know, because I'm going to Detroit next month. Okay. And when you do, and I know you wear several hats, I mean, you're a scholar and you're a, an artist and um, you're something in between, which I think graphics always requires you to be, um, how do you investigate? Is it, um, is it with a camera or um, uh, what, what's your process? Uh, for this project, there's a lot. There's actually going out into the field with a camera, um, with you know, geolocative technology, and you know, documenting the stuff and geotagging it and putting it into you know into into maps, into GIS maps um, like Google Earth, uh, and documenting all this stuff. Um, also, working with you see a little bit of it here. Um, there's uh, I work with um, uh, historic maps, so I'm geo-referencing those maps, putting them in, layering this contemporary data with historic data. Uh, so there's both sort of what would be sort of traditional academic research. We're looking for, uh, you know, uh, different historical sources, um, going out at the field and doing this stuff. Uh, and then there's a big part of it, which is a creative process, which is later taking all of this stuff and going into the studio, and in some ways throwing away all of sort of these very specific sort of conceptual models and just sort of being maybe more intuitive. And that's where the place sort of intersects between sort of this more um, uh, sort of instrumental research uh, and creative work. Well, I'm going to just observe that um, uh, our first presentation by Peter, whose usual mode is anthropological, but for the film he showed us, ventured into something which was more narrative and creative. Um, I feel like there's some kind of link between what we just heard <coughs> from an anthropologist and what we're hearing from a graphic designer in terms of um, bending towards fiction. Uh, some inclination towards that, which is, which is interesting to me. Uh, that search for narrative uh, seems very compelling right now. Let's open it up for questions and, and comments. Yes. How do, you, how do you feel this work does or does not interact with uh, contemporary concerns uh, regarding surveillance? Oh, did you all hear that? Okay, how does this interact with contemporary concerns about surveillance? Uh, well, I mean, I guess it does in some of the technology that I'm using uh, and that there's, right, I mean, now that, you know, I actually take now that the, the resolution on my phone is good enough for a lot of the photographs, I actually just do it on my phone and I know that that data is, you know, is basically being uh, harvested. Uh, I, I, I don't address that issue. Uh, first of all, I don't think my data is very interesting. Um, <laughs> to anybody who would care. Uh, and that's, while compelling, it's not, I don't, I don't think that falls within my view. You know. Yes? Well, that addresses you as a surveyor, but what about you as a surveyor? Uh, yeah, I mean, I am. I'm surveying the landscape. I'm, I'm documenting the landscape, and there's certainly a, a, a long tradition of documenting landscapes. Um, and I'm doing it at sort of a, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I am a surveyor. I don't, I don't know. Of objects and text or of communities as well? No, not communities. I mean, they're of artifacts. I'm looking at artifacts um, and, and those artifacts as texts. Um, and so the text that is sort of a micro level and then at a, at a, at a macro level. Mm -hmm. But speaking of surveillance, I mean, there is some, some poop code here. Um, and, and a live theoretician is so informing your work. Sure. Right? So, yeah. I mean, you I, read, you read. I can see ways. I can see ways in which you could probably define 
an element of some kind of surveillance and discipline and all that? There right? there certainly right. is. I mean, and certainly this idea of... I, mean, I just read your files. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Where Foucault was not mentioned. No, I, it's not. I mean, there is this idea of the gay, certainly. I mean, yeah. in terms of culture yeah. and, and, and vision and, and, yeah. and the language that we create. And I guess my interest is, I'm sort of coming from the, the, the bottom side, from the underside, yeah. looking at, at the details. I think there are definitely issues about that in terms of how then that sort of, that consciousness is constructed through, through the semiotic space. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in sort of how that system works, and the gaze, I guess, is a part of that. But you know, we have to focus, so. <laughs> um. So Josh, how do we access this work? Well, there, uh, this book is actually online uh, in its entirety uh, on issue. And I guess if you Google me and issue, it might come up. Um, if not, you can Google me and SFSU, and it'll come up, and you can email me, and I can send it to you. Uh, and then there's photographs. It's actually a physical book, too, um, and that's what I exhibited. Um, it's actually a big, bound, paper, old-school kind of book. Thank you. I think, believe it or not, as a result <laughs> of these 10 or 12 minutes, I understand better. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>